welcome back to Tiara's Tea. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm coming to you with the first episode on how to become financially educated. Topic for today is credit score. So I want to start off with this. Have you ever heard the saying an 800 credit score is worth more than $100,000? Well, let me tell you, whoever said that was not lying. A credit follows you, money don't. And a credit can determine the type of person you are. So first things first, what is a credit score? Your credit score is a number that represents your overall credit worthiness. It also is used to predict the likelihood of delinquency or non-payment of credit obligation. Lastly, it plays a prominent role on determining your eligibility for big purchases such as a house or a car. Now that we know what a credit score is and how important it is, let's get into understanding your credit score. A credit score ranges from 300 to 850. Where 300 is really bad and 850 is perfect. Put it like this, the higher your credit score, the lower your interest rate will be. Now that we understand the credit score range, let's get into what makes up a credit score. There are five factors that make up your credit score. Payment history, level of debt, age of credit, types of credit, and credit inquiries. As you can see based on this chart, the biggest factor that determines your credit score is your payment history. It is worth 35% of your credit score. So what is payment history? Your payment history considers your repayment behavior over time. I like to put it like this. Are you paying your bills on time? If you miss a payment or even pay something late, it drops your credit score so low, minimum 100 points. One thing to keep in mind, pay your bills on time. Because when you pay your bills on time, it reassures lenders you are very responsible, you're a trustworthy borrower, and you're less of a risk. Think of it like when you hang out with your friends, your friend asks you for money. The first thing you think about is, will this person pay me back my money? And we all have those type of friends that just never pay you back. Because that's how lenders look at it. Lenders look at it as, if I give you money, will you pay it back? That's why it makes up 35% of your credit score. It is a huge deal to pay your bills on time and on time, not late, not an hour late, not a day or week late, on time. If anything, pay it early. So you might ask, what can I do to make sure I pay it on time? First tip, I suggest setting up auto pay. What they don't really tell you online, usually some people set the auto pay the same day as the due date. My advice is to do it three days before the due date because let's say something happened or something went wrong. They wasn't able to take the money out of your account on time. To be safe, set up auto pay three days before the due date. Three business days, I should say, before the due date. Don't do Friday because then Saturday and Sunday, you know, banks aren't open. If you don't want to do auto pay, you can do bill pay reminders where you can set up reminders on your phone, your computer anywhere where it can remind you to pay your bills on time. Again, try to pay your bills three business days before the due date. They are self-explanatory. Pay your bills on time. Simple as that. The second factor that makes up your credit score is the level of debt, and that is worth 30%. So you might ask, what is level of debt? So credit usage deals with the amount of available credit you have. The goal is to have more credit than debt. Think about it again, like if you're with your friend and they ask you for money. Now, if one of my friends asks me for money and they said they're gonna pay me back, cool, I see they always pay their bills on time. However, let's say my friend has three kids, a uh, baby mama or baby daddy drama, family issues, moving around a lot, and I'm just like, they have so many other bills to pay. How do I know they're going to pay me back on time? When it comes to your credit score, the key factor is to ensure your debt is up to par. Here, I want to show you guys an example of how to make sure your debt is up to par. Let's say you have three credit cards, American Express, Chase, and Discover. And each credit card has a credit limit. American Express has a $1,000 credit limit. Chase has $2,000. Discover has $500. The point of this is you don't max out your credit card. That's the obvious. But to make sure your debt is up to par, you don't spend more than 30% of the credit limit. So when you go here, as you can see, American Express credit limit is $1,000. 30% 
of a thousand dollars is three hundred dollars. So that means you cannot spend more than three hundred dollars on your American Express card. But the Chase card, thirty percent of two thousand dollars is six hundred dollars. So the max you're able to spend on your Chase card is six hundred. And for the following Discover, thirty percent of five hundred dollars is one fifty. So the max you're able to spend is one fifty. And this will make sure that you're not thirty percent above each credit card. So in conclusion, your total credit limit is $3,500. I basically added all three credit limits from each credit card. And 30% of $3,500 is $1,050. To make sure you have good credit, in this scenario right here, do not spend more than $1,050. Third factor that makes up a credit score is the age of your credit. And that's worth 15%. The age of your oldest credit account shows lenders how much experience you have handling an account. Think of it as, hmm, I'm trying to think. Let's say you're a startup entrepreneur and you started a business. You want to promote your business and you're telling your friends, hey, share my page, promote my product, right? Your friend's going to look at you and be like, but didn't you just start a business with clothing, a business with makeup, a business with cars? If you're constantly starting up businesses and you're not being consistent with it, why would your friend want to promote your business? It's just more of consistency. The age of your credit limit shows how consistent you are. And managing your credit. So a big tip is to keep your oldest credit account at a good standing. Let's say you open up a store card at the age 15 and you're 30 now. That would be 15 years you had that credit card. And as you can see here, that's good standing. To have excellent standing, you need to have 25 plus years. And it can be with anything, a credit card, a loan. It's just, yeah. I mean, it's only 15%, but people might ask, okay, I'm only 20 years old. How can I have a credit account of 25 plus years in order to be considered excellent? So my tip here is this is where your parents come in. And for those who have parents with good standing credit, and or for parents who's watching this right now, my advice is to put your child on one of your credit cards. Let's say you have a credit card, well, I don't know, American Eagle, right? But you don't shop there a lot. It's best to put your child or someone on a card that you don't use as much and has a good credit standing history. For example, my mom has a JCPenney store card and she put me on that card. My mom opened up that card in 2001. So on my credit report, it's going to come up as me having that card for 19 years because I'm on the same account as my mom. And that builds my credit history. Because I opened up my first credit card in college in 2015. And right now it's 2020. So basically, my oldest credit account is only four years old. By me being on my mom's JCPenney card, my credit history would show I have a card from 19 years ago. And that would help me and put me in the good, almost to the excellent position. So the fourth factor that makes up a credit score is the type of credits you have. And that is worth 10%. There are two basic types of credit accounts, revolving account and an installment loan. Having both types of accounts on your credit report shows how diversified you are and well at managing your account. What is a revolving account? A revolving account is a type of credit that does not have a fixed payment amount. Examples of a revolving account are credit cards or a home equity line of credit. To give you a better scenario, when you go to a bar, and you order a drink, you tell them to put it on your tab. That is considered a revolving account. Basically, by putting it on your tab, you constantly order drinks over and over and over. You pay it off, but the tab is still open even when you paid it off. So it's never ending. It's not a fixed number of payment when it comes to open tab. You just use it until you don't want to use it anymore. It's a type of credit line that can be used repeatedly up to a certain limit as long as the account is still open and payments are made on time. Although it's a revolving account, you still have to make sure you pay it on time. Again, that's the biggest factor, paying on time. So installment loans are the opposite of revolving accounts. Installment loans have a fixed numbers of payments. In addition, it cannot be used again once it's paid off. So for example, if you lease a car and you make X amount of payment. Um, let's say you lease a car for $20,000, three years. Once you pay off that $20,000, that's it. It's not an open tab where, okay, I'm gonna add more. 
you would then have to release it and obtain a new payment or give it back or whatever you want to do with the car. But at the end of the day, that's it. Or a student loan. Once you pay off the student loan, it's not, okay, now extend what I have with the same percentage. Once you pay off the loan you signed up for, it's closed and you have to open up a new one. It can't be used again. But um, let's say you don't have a car payment or a student loan. It's fine if you're not able to diversify your credit report. Remember, it's only worth 10%. 10% isn't a lot. So if you're looking to increase your credit score, this is a good way on increasing it. Um, if you want to give it a little boost by 10%, just like diversifying your loans. But other than that, it's only worth 10%. And the fifth factor that makes up the credit score is credit inquiries. And that is worth 10%. Credit inquiries are the amount of times you look up your credit report. Each time you submit an application that requires a credit check, an inquiry is placed on your credit report, showing that you've made a credit-based application. Remember, inquiries only make up 10% of your credit score. One or two inquiries won't hurt your credit report, but several inquiries, especially within a short time period, can reduce your credit score by a lot of points. Don't apply for too many things that requires to check your credit. Wait six months, not a month, two months, three months. My suggestion is six months. So let's say you're looking to buy a house or to buy a car. Make sure six months prior to that, you didn't open up a credit card, open up for a new loan or anything like that. And when you look up your credit score, that's a credit inquiry because it requires a credit check. So my advice is to sign up for apps that do soft credit checks and just know those soft credit checks are not accurate. So Credit Rise is one, Credit Karma is another one. Those do soft credit check and um, it's not 100% accurate, but it gives you an estimate of what your credit report is. If you want to do a hard credit check. So to do a hard credit check to see your actual accurate credit report, here you just type in credit report on Google and the official one is as you can see here where it ends in .gov. I highlight it again. When you see .gov, you know this is from the government and this is how you know it's like a trustworthy site. Here on the first page, it explains to you about credit report, how to get a free credit report, warnings about imposter websites, um, information you need to provide to get a report, and why should you want a report? So well, here you go to annual credit report to get your free credit report. And they're going to direct you to the site. I usually let them automatically redirect me. Once I get here, here's the annual credit report. And here they have notifications due to the COVID-19, like information you should read. And um, here you request it. You have to fill out a form. And when you do, they're going to ask you for your personal information, like your name, social security, address, and etc. And once you fill it out, that's how you go about getting an accurate number of what your credit is. Tyler Gregory once said, if you don't take good care of your credit, then your credit won't take good care of you. And you want your credit to take good care of you. When you build and maintain a strong credit, lenders have greater confidence when qualifying you for big purchases. Strong credit means lenders are more willing to approve you for purchases that have more favorable terms and lower interest rates. So thank you guys for watching. I hope I was able to educate you on what a credit score is and what a credit report is. Stay tuned for my next video, which will be about credit cards and how to obtain and maintain a credit card. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below.